Hi, my name is Richard from the Richards Bay Baptist Church, and welcome to our Sunday service, all those that are online, and welcome to everybody in the house. We are uh, doing some live um, Sunday service, so it's exciting for us. I pray that if you have not connected with us, that you follow the links and give us some of your information so that we can get in contact with you should you need any information about our church or maybe there's some specific prayer. Um, you can do that through our online platform or through any of the links that are showing on Facebook and on YouTube. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Gracious Father, thank you for the faith that you give us. I pray that you be with us today as we encounter your word. I pray that our faith is grown, um, that we are drawn closer to you. So let this time be a blessing. Uh, may you be glorified as we worship you, as we sing songs to praise you, and then we dig deeper into your word. So may you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Things 
work together for my good Cause you make all things work together for my good Cause you make all things work together for my good Cause you stay the same through the ages There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. No, no. You make Cause you make All things Work together for my good Cause you make All things Work together for my good Cause you make All things Work together for my good Yes, you make all things Work together for my good You stay Cause you stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night but joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me Your love never fails Father God, we thank you, Lord, that your love never fails. Father, that we have you always and forever. Father God, that you have to be worried about, about how you look at us because of our sin. But Father God, we can be con just firm, Father God, in the love that you have for us. Knowing that you've forgiven us. And Father God, you call us to be with you forever that there is no chasm too far or too wide because you love us that much.
set the captives free. Leave us abandoned to your praise. Lord, let your glory fall. Lord, let your glory your spirit father god you'd stir it in us father god this passion father god that's never ending that never runs out that never dies and father god is not driven by our own passions our own pursuits but father god is driven by the passion of you driven by your spirit driven by the love of jesus christ and the conviction of our hearts father god as you continually 
change us and mold us into your likeness. So bless us this morning. May we worship you. May we honor you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning. My name is Noel and I'm an elder at the Riches Bay Baptist Church. And this morning I would like to extend a warm word of welcome to everybody who has decided to join us today for our online service. As we said last week, we are in the process of slowly but surely reopening our more normal face-to-face -face service formats. So for those members of our church family who have decided to join us today in the church, a great and a warm word of welcome. And I really hope you enjoy this time of fellowship that we have together today. As is the custom in our church, let's start our service with a prayer. Dear Lord, this morning I come to you and I ask that you bless our hearts with greater understanding of the hope that we have in you and a, and a greater level of understanding of all the promises that you've got in store for us. Thank you that you understand all our needs, both spiritual and physical, and you have a plan in place to meet our needs in all aspects of our lives. Amen. This morning when we look at the world around us, I think it's quite evident that a big portion of the population of the world have had their belief systems deeply shaken by the events that have unfolded since the start of 2020. And I think it's only evident that as we try and adjust to the new normal, most of us have been pushed and buffeted by the storm of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, it's also true that in times like these, we are sometimes forced to stop and reflect deeply about our lives. And it's when we do that, that our hearts are in the right place to learn and to grow. So this morning, I want to share with you a short message about something that I learned from God's Word during these difficult times. The text that I want to use today is Psalm 1. So let's start by reading from Psalm 1. Psalm 1, two ways to live. Happy are those who don't listen to the wicked, who don't go where sinners go, who don't do what evil people do. They love the Lord's teachings, and they think about those teachings day and night. They are strong, like a tree planted by a river. The tree produces fruit in season, and its leaves don't die. Everything they do will succeed. But wicked people are not like that. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. So the wicked will not escape God's punishment. Sinners will not worship with God's people. This is because the Lord takes care of his people, but the wicked will be destroyed. When I read this psalm recently, this comparison between God's children and the wicked really struck me. This comparison is, is available in verse 3 to 4, and I just want to emphasize it by reading it again. They are strong, like a tree planted by a river. The tree produces fruit in season, and its leaves don't die. Everything they do will succeed. But wicked people are not like that. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. What a direct and interesting comparison. David states that the child of God who is rooted in the word of God is like a tree. However, the unbeliever who surrounds himself with mockers is like chaff, the loose and useless parts that covers the wheat kernel that's often left behind on the threshing floor after this um, harvest has been collected. What I find striking about this comparison is that David, David does not state that the believer is a strong tree and the unbeliever is a weak tree, or that the believer is a big tree and the unbeliever is a small tree, or that the believer is a tree and the unbeliever is a rose bush. No. He says that the believer is a tree that will carry fruit in season, and that the unbeliever is like chaff, something with no root, no foundation, nothing to hold on to, that will simply be blown away by the wind. Now let me ask the following question. What does it mean when David says the believer is like a tree? Does it mean that, we, that when the storms of life are raging around us, that we will not be bent, our branches will not be broken off, and we will not lose our leaves? No, it doesn't mean that. But what it does mean is that if we are well-rooted in good, good soil, the chances of us simply falling over and dying in any kind of storm is very, very slim. However, if we compare that against chaff, as I said, which is the loose and useless parts of the wheat kernel, it's a big different story. Chaff is picked up by the slightest breeze, and it doesn't take a big storm 
for chaff to disappear all over the horizon. The question we can ask ourselves now is, but what is the source of the strength of the tree and its ability to bear fruit? Again, Psalm 1 gives us some guidance in this aspect. Let's read from Psalm 1. Happy are those who don't listen to the wicked, who don't go where sinners go, who don't do what evil people do. They love the Lord's teachings, and they think about those teachings day and night. So clearly there's a reference to righteous living, but there's also a direct link to the power of the word of God in the life of the believer. Jesus reinforces this concept in his confrontation with the devil in the desert. In Matthew 4 we read, The devil came to Jesus to tempt him, saying, If you are the Son of God, tell these rocks to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written in the Scriptures, A person lives not on bread alone, but by everything God says. So what Psalm 1 and Matthew 4 is trying to tell us is that we need spiritual food to become strong and that we find the spiritual food we need in God's Word. In addition to that, Jesus also tells the Samaritan woman at the well that everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Furthermore, in Matthew 7, Jesus also reminds us of the wise and the foolish builders. Everyone who hears my words and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. It rained hard, the floods came and the winds blew and hit that house, but it did not fall because it was built on rock. Therefore, from the scriptures above, it is clear that a solid foundation, a solid root system, requires a relationship with Jesus, the study of God's Word, and the application of what we learned in God's Word. It's important for us to remember that just like a tree doesn't mature in a single season, our lives also stretch over multiple seasons. And if we want to survive that journey and, and grow strong and be, a, be able to deliver fruit, it's really important for us to continuously look for spiritual food and water. And we must do that on a daily basis. But this is also the area in our lives where we need great discernment. The world teaches us that it can fulfill all our needs, both spiritual and physical, from what is within the world. However, I think if we just look at what's going on around us at this very moment, the coronavirus pandemic is proving, as we stand here, that our cars, our jobs, and even our pension funds really forms a foundation of sand. Just like our physical stomachs and our physical hunger cannot be satisfied by reading a Bible verse, in a similar way, our spiritual needs cannot be satisfied by the physical things in the world. In Jeremiah 2, our God laments the fact that His people have forsaken Him, the source of real living water, to dig wells for themselves that holds water that will never ever give life. We must therefore remember that for spiritual growth and spiritual strengthening, we need spiritual food. Unfortunately, we do not find spiritual food on News 24, YouTube videos, and Facebook likes. Instead, we suspend our precious and limited time to pursue real living water to help us build our spiritual trees. I often feel that in this time and age in which we live, that our minds are so full of things, stuff, information we get from all the social media platforms and everything that goes on around us, that there's literally no more space and we don't have the capacity to accommodate the renewing work of the Holy Spirit. We should rather then take our time and focus on growing spiritually stronger because this will help us to face the storms of life. I think all of us will agree that when we go and write exam, it is really an unpleasant experience if we haven't prepared for that exam, especially if we've had all the time in the world and the resources required to make ourselves ready to go and write that exam. And often we will not even be surprised when we fail that exam. But why then are we surprised when we sometimes fail the tests of life if we've not taken the effort 
to use the resources we've been given to prepare ourselves to overcome those tests. Therefore, I think it's really important for us to be wise and use everything that God has provided us to become strong so that we can face and overcome the challenges and the storms that will come our way. You may now ask, but the resources that we need, does God give them freely? Are they available? I think there's a very simple answer to that. If you go on the internet now and you do a simple search, you will find that the Bible is the most publicized book in the history of mankind. And in addition to that, I promise you, I guarantee you, that you do not need to undergo a credit check to join the church, to accept Jesus as your Savior, or to be led by the Holy Spirit. In this instance, the old saying of the best things in life are for free truly applies. When I think about Psalm 1, I actually found the, the heading of Psalm 1 as one of the most interesting parts of this piece of Scripture. I want to read it again. Psalm 1, two ways to live. This implies that we have a choice. It implies that we can either take a root that will make us strong, that will turn us into strong, mature trees that can bear fruit and, and resist, resist the devil and the storms of life that we will face. Or we can go another way. We will end up bearing no fruit and not being people of, of, of substance. The question is not, when we think about this, that does God provide what I need to become a strong and mature person? No. The question is, do I choose to become a strong and mature Christian by utilizing all the resources God has given me? I just want to reiterate again. If you choose the better option and become a strong and mature Christian, it does not mean that when the winds of life will blow against you, that sometimes you will bend and your branches will break off and you will lose leaves. It doesn't mean that. But what it does mean is that you've enhanced your chances of surviving the storm multiple times. I want to end off my message by reading from Psalm 1 again. Psalm 1. Two ways to live. Happy are those who don't listen to the wicked, who don't go where sinners go, who don't do what evil people do. They love the Lord's teachings, and they think about those teachings day and night. They are strong like a tree planted by a river. The tree produces fruit in season and its leaves don't die. Everything they do will succeed. I think it's important for us to understand that God's plan for us is complete. He wants to equip us with everything we need to face the challenges of life. And on top of that, He has already promised us eternal victory. The question here is, what do we choose? Do we choose to use these resources that are freely available in the world, that God has given as gifts to us for free, to become strong and mature? Or do we choose the second way and stay like pieces of chaff that's blown around by the wind? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the completeness of the plan that you've made for us. Thank you that what you've done does not require us to qualify for your grace but that you've given it to us freely. And, and thank you that you've blessed us in so many ways. Thank you that you've given us your word as a spiritual, a spiritual food and your spirit as the guarantee of your promises. Thank you for all the resources you provide to help us mature and face the challenges of life. Amen. Morning, everybody. So if you missed our last coffee and prayer drive through check out this video. Hi there. Are you missing us like we're missing you? Then on 30 August, get down to the church between 10 and 11 for our coffee and prayer drive through and have the opportunity to experience this. Welcome to the Rishi Bay Baptist Church. Can I take your order for coffee this morning? Two cappuccinos, please. Great, I'll be right back. And don't forget, we have Borobos rolls on sale for 30 rand each. 
And if you'd like any prayer or connect, just drive straight forward there and there'll be an elder to pray with you. Thanks for coming. Bye. You shall not pass. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Can we pray for you? Um, yes, please pray for me. Great. Okay. So don't miss out, 30 August between 10 and 11, free coffee on us and Bruvo Rolls on sale for 30 Rand. See you there. So guys, how exciting was that? I hope that we see you guys at our next Coffee and Prayer drive through And then on another note, Jason mentioned the ARC last week, so I just want to share a little bit of insight on that. It is really exciting. We have two different projects going at the moment with the guys at the ARC, and the one is our upcycle project, which is where they take off cuts of wood, where they're able to make it into furniture. And then there is our jewelry project where they also take recyclable goods and they make really, really stunning and unique earrings and jewelry items out of it. If you guys would like to get involved with this, it would be super helpful. Any off cuts of wood that you guys would like to donate to the guys at the shelter or your coffee pods that come with your coffee machines because they use that for the earrings or any old beads that you have lying around or tin soda cans. That is how you guys can contribute into this amazing, amazing work that is happening there. And this is just such an amazing thing for the guys there at the ARC because it gives them a sense of purpose, again, through their accomplishments and the things that they are doing with their hands creatively. So really hope that you guys can support this amazing cause. Next, we have our Zoom In, which happens every Thursday evening at 7 p.m., Please invite your friends and family to be a part of this. It is a great way to grow deeper in your faith and into the Word of God. We will post our Zoom links via our social media platforms on the Thursday so that you guys don't miss out. And then, super exciting for our step in this week, the kiddies are learning about David and his victory as he defeats his big giant Goliath. And now, over to Vi. Hey guys, so this coming Sunday we're going to be putting an end to our Encounter series and we're going to be starting our new series next week Sunday and this coming Sunday if you are on our YouTube channel you will see me explaining a little bit more on our new series so uh, please stay tuned and continue supporting Echo Youth. Thank you. Awesome, thank you Vitalist and Angie for just the reminders of what's happening in those ministries. Just a reminder that if you call Riches Bay Baptist Church your home and you'd like to continue supporting us financially, there is a link in the description of both our Facebook and YouTube videos. Uh, and if you're on our online platform, there's a button that's popped up right now to say give, and that will also take you just through to the details to help you to do that. But thank you very much for your support. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, then just a reminder that uh, we'd love to just pray with you. And so if you're in-house, now remember that you can hang around afterwards, and we have elders ready to pray with you. Uh, and so please make use of the opportunity just to, to touch base with them and maybe get some prayer, some encouragement uh, to do that. Um, and then just again, if you are online, there is a number that's popped up onto your screen right now. And that is a number that you can contact for an elder to pray with you either telephonically or even to come out to your house to pray with you and encourage you in your own home. But please make use of the opportunity. But right now, remember... If you've got kids, step in lesson is about to start. So make sure you've got Zoom ready and you've got your kids ready to have some fun. Have a great day. Thank you.
you are my champion Giants for when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated But the one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let the striving see This is my victory You are my champion Giants for when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all My voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me When I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start Giants for when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given You are my champion Giants for when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated, we're the one who has come.